All right. Well, thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, and, and sort of building on what Donnie uh, has been talking about, you know, documentation being effective about it. I guess here's yet another talk that talks about that. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about uh, this idea of a lab notebook um, with the intent of uh, bringing science back to data science. Uh, by way of introduction, I'm the founder and principal researcher at the Montreal Ethics Institute. It's an international nonprofit uh, research institute that uh, uh, aims to democratize AI ethics literacy. I also work as a machine learning engineer at Microsoft, where I serve on the CSE Responsible AI uh, board. So, well, if you notice an odd format of my slides, I left a little bit of space because apparently our like little video bubbles are going to pop up on the site, so none of the content gets covered, and I'm hoping that that goal has been achieved. Uh, so who am I uh, in addition to my formal introduction? Uh, I am first and foremost a practitioner. So uh, you know, uh, when I'm not doing talks or not writing papers, et cetera, I'm writing code. Uh, and so that's, uh, you know, that sort of is my lens to uh, all the work that I do. Uh, I'm a community builder. Uh, it's in the context of the work that I do in the space of AI ethics, uh, the goal being that um, it's it's important to bring in a diversity of perspectives and uh, learning from the folks who are on the ground in our communities uh, is a great way of doing that. There's ample that I've learned from folks in adjacent fields. In fact, the idea of the lab notebook uh, sort of came or emerged from this uh, idea in the physical sciences where they have an actual physical uh, lab notebook that they use. Um, I'm a writer. I believe it's important to convey ideas, uh, and uh, you know, writing also helps to articulate uh, thoughts. So uh, I tend to do that uh, quite a lot. I can find my writings on my website, on LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Uh, and finally, I'm a pragmatist. I believe it's important that we remain practical about some of the challenges that we face in the field today. Uh, and the lab notebook is one attempt of me being pragmatic with some of the challenges that I've faced as I've done this. And sometimes I have strong preferences for certain things which really end up being trivial and don't matter. So, uh, you know, side with GIF or GIF, uh, whichever suits you well. Uh, and just as a note, uh, if you ever want to find me, uh, my Twitter handle is at the bottom, as is my uh, website. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna try something uh, new and, and we're gonna see if this works. We tried it yesterday, it did work, uh, so I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna do a quick poll and the intention of doing the poll is that I think uh, it's a great way to collectively um, see how all of us think about this idea. Uh, and, and of course, I'm gonna be talking about it, but I think it'll be a good lens into how uh, all of your fellow attendees uh, are, are also thinking about this. So I'm gonna make that switch real fast and see how efficient I can be with that. And... And I think that worked. Uh, so if you if you all want to help me out here, uh, so this is a tool called ManyMeter, and I'd love for you to drop in a few words on what comes to your mind when you hear the word, uh, words lap notebook. Uh, you can go to menti.com and punch in the code that's at the top of the screen. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully some of that will start popping up as a word cloud. We'll be able to see some of the themes in terms of uh, what you know you and you know fellow attendees are thinking about this, uh, or or what they think about this. And and of course, you know, I'll, I'll walk through my presentation um, as well. So hoping that you're able to do that. Go to menti.com, and the code is at the top of the screen. Ah, thank you. Yeah, see, someone's put in something there, and you can put in multiple. Uh, uh, submissions as well. Um, Loosely structured, esoteric, reproducible. I love that. Oh, Jupiter. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, Muddy organization document shared. Yeah, that's important. Organizing stuff, experiments. I guess you missing missing sheets of paper. So uh, you know, given that we're going to be talking about a digital notebook, hopefully that's not going to be an issue. And I'm going to be talking of, about a version controlled. Uh, it you know formulation of it so again hopefully that's not a problem uh notes to self yeah that's going to be a huge part of it reproducibility is is there i like that someone put in napkins i'd love for whoever put that in to ping me on the csv uh slack uh, i'd love to hear more on what what you wow this is fantastic um and so yeah i see why jupiter is is sort of taking center stage here uh, which is great, so I'll, I'll, I'll help clarify that as we go along. Um, reproducible documentation, organization, 
those are definitely key steps. Uh, da Vinci mirror writing, yes, thank you. Uh, you know, you will have some Da Vinci moments hopefully by the time we're done uh, going through this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this open for another 30 seconds if you want to put in something. But I think some key themes have already emerged here in terms of uh, record in terms of documentation, in terms of reproducibility, in terms of having a legitimate process to how you're going about practicing data science. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for such an enthusiastic participation. More than 100 people have already chimed in. Um, so this is, this is awesome. Um, very cool. OK, all right. So I'm going to move to my next question because we're also like super tight on time here. Um, and one second here. Uh, okay, you'll have to pardon that my computer is a little bit slow. Uh, I'll pull up the next question, and it's still the same code. Uh, and you should see a prompt on your screen that uh, will show you that there is a new question on there. And so, just as you did for this one, if you can go in and quickly punch in a few words that you think. Uh, you know, what would be some of the biggest pain points that you think a lab notebook can solve for your data science workflow? And I know this is a little bit premature because I haven't even, you know, explicated fully what uh, it's going to be about, but I'm, I'm hoping to surface some interesting uh, themes and ideas that you guys think that a lab notebook can potentially solve. Um, reproducibility coming up again. Shareability of process. Yes, I'm, I'm huge on process as a practitioner, so I love whoever put that in. Exploratory analysis, communication is huge. That is, uh, again, very, very important. Uh, collaborating, fantastic. Remembering what I did, uh, amen to that. Uh, uh, gosh, the num number of times I forget. You know, I have like untitled notebook number 23, and then it's like hella confusing why or, or what was actually going on. Uh, shareability of process, fantastic. Um, collaboration, reproducibility is sort of taking center stage, which I love, because uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the replica replicability crisis that we faced in the field, especially I think, um, you know, actually one of my professors, Professor Joel Pino, had, uh, you know, sort of uh, kickstarted a more mainstream discussion on this uh, at uh, NeurIPS about three years ago, uh, you know, uh, documenting how there were a lot of problems with uh, uh, reproducibility in our field. So, so this is fantastic to see. Um, Perfect. Thank you so much uh, for all of you who've chimed in so far. I'm going to go back to my my slides now. Um, but what I love this, uh, I, I think this is fantastic. And, and, and you know, we can continue to follow up on this work cloud um, as we go along as well. Um, cool. I'm going to go back to my slides real fast. So this was relatively painless, uh, which I'm happy about. And hopefully my slides are back up. So thank you for chiming in. I think uh, you know I can stop my talk now because all of you all covered uh, quite a few of the points that I'm going to be talking about. Um, but just sort of uh, you know concretizing all of those, uh, the key goal for the lab notebook and the way it's going to be practiced. And I'm I'm going to you know uh, first sort of just lay out what I think. Uh, you know, the what, why, and the how for, for the lab notebook. And I'll, I'll, I'll drop in a link because it's a short talk uh, for a tool that I personally use to create my own lab notebook, but also happy to chat afterwards in the Slack in terms of how to go about doing it. Um, so primarily it's, it, it's a, a, you know, it works as an organizational tool, right? And, and it's not just for uh, tracking ML artifacts as you would think with, for which you can use pre-established uh, tools like MLflow, DVC, uh, you know, weights and biases, et cetera. Uh, this is more so for ideas, right? This is more so for the journey of arriving at ideas. Uh, I, you know, you, all of you are no strangers to this perhaps that, uh, you know, when we're practicing data science, uh, rarely do you arrive magically at the solution all at once. It's a meandering path and journey to get to it, uh, which means that, uh, you know, when we arrive at that final idea, if, if that has happened over a, a long period of time, we, we end up forgetting how we got there. Uh, why is this important? This is important because, you know, you, you might come back to that project later on, or you might even come back to it like, uh, you know, uh, two or three weeks later, and and you you forget how you arrived at some of the decisions, and and you beat yourself up um, as as to you know why you made certain choices. So this is this is one way of sort of organizing that, right? It's meant to serve as a memory aid. And I'm, you know, again with the pandemic, there are a million things going around us. Uh, work and home life has blended as well. I 
personally find the lab notebook as a way of centering my data science practice in a in a concrete way where uh, you know it just sort of gives me clarity every day coming in doing my work closing my day off having a bit of sort of closure to the work that i have done you know documenting some of the findings and then you know picking it back up again the next day uh, i also wanted to put in this idea of record of ownership of uh, ideas because uh, you know as i said this was inspired by the physical sciences and in the physical sciences uh, there is an important, uh, you know, there is importance in uh, sort of who, you know, germinated or who created the idea. And, uh, you know, that can become important in terms of, you know, proving uh, ownership of the idea when it comes to, you know, filing for patents, et cetera. Maybe that's not so much the case in a corporate world because, uh, you know, you're all operating in a team together. You may be working on applied products, but even in industry uh, research labs that uh, this can be important. And so the lab notebook can be a way to, to exercise that. Uh, what's also interesting is that, you know, some of you brought up this notion of, well, you know, loose sheets or, you know, sheets getting lost, et cetera, uh, in the first question, uh, the way, uh, you know, this obviously formulated in a, in a digital context, uh, you situated in, in a version control setting uh, and you can use the Git uh, sort of IDs to uh, identify uh, you know, who the author of, of specific ideas in that is. And of course, you know, a lot of it is also predicated on how you practice it. And so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some best practices uh, or I shouldn't say best practices, but some proven practices that I've utilized and, and uh, you know, hopefully some will resonate. And if they don't also, please feel free to ask questions on that. So I kind of already touched on this, right? Um, uh, you know, why to do, why to have a lab notebook in the first place. Uh, I think the most important thing that it does for me is to, set as a North Star on why I'm doing a certain project in the first place. Uh, what ends up happening, at least, you know, in, in practice is that you have a lot of evolving business needs, you have customer demands that change over time. And, and you know, as I said, uh, you know, uh, I'm the founder principal researcher at the Montreal AI Ethics Institute. I, I spend a lot of my time thinking about uh, ethical issues in AI. And uh, quite a few of them actually stem from uh, this notion where, uh, you know, the the project starts as, as a way of, you know, addressing a particular problem and creating a solution, but then gradually shifts over time where uh, it, it, it is infeasible and incompatible with, you know, how you're approaching it. And, and that leads to a lot of ethical concerns. And so using, using this lab notebook as a, as a North Star, as a center uh, is, is one, uh, you know, good use for it. Um, of course, we, we, we spoke about this lineage of decision-making. So you don't want to have, you know, untitled notebook number 23 that you throw over the wall and and have it be you know run you know uh, productionized so as to say of course you know uh, refactoring the code etc but the journey is very important because uh, later on uh, you know if you're seeking to make some improvements over it you need to know how you arrived at the current configuration be that in terms of the model in terms of the features that you've constructed uh, etc uh, the the training regimes that you've used and and if you don't have a, a documented lineage of that decision making you're going to run into issues where you know you don't really have uh, clarity in terms of how you arrived at that current configuration and what's already been tried so that you don't waste time doing that again. And, and it's not meant to replace things like MLflow, DVC, weights and biases and other tools. It's just meant to supplement that in terms of documenting some of these things that aren't really documentable in, in, a, in a clear fashion in, in some of these other tools. Um, you know, another thing is that uh, if, if you're to come back to a project, as I was saying later on, you don't want to be in a situation where you're relying on uh, you know, limited artifacts to guess how you arrived at it. Uh, you know, I don't have a photographic memory. I wish I was like Mike from Suits who remembered everything. I'm not. Uh, so, you know, having something like this, you know, just makes my life easier. Uh, and for, for those who are, you know, perhaps interested in the ethical side of things, um, audit trails are going to be something that, uh, you know, uh, emergent regulations are going to make mandatory in a lot of places, especially highly regulated domains like finance and healthcare this can be an instrument that uh, helps support that um, as well. Uh, so as I said, you know, uh, it helps you keep track of ideas. Uh, more importantly, it becomes a record for future research work as well. So not just for yourself, because, you know, let's face it, this happens to all of us. You know, we come back a month later and we're like, who wrote this code? And it's, you know, you do a git blame and it's like, yeah, it, it was me. And then you just, you know, end up looking like a dummy. Uh, but also it's for your teammates who are gonna, you know, work on this project perhaps in the future. Uh, so it's a great way to do that. Um, you know, sometimes even funding can run out for a particular project or you might have to lay it dormant and come back to it. So again, 
a useful mechanism to do that. Uh, reproducibility, the more you know, structured documentation you have in terms of how you arrived at a particular configuration, the easier it will be for someone else to also reproduce uh, your experiment and arrive at the same results or find things that haven't worked and, and help you, you know, sort of do better. And so, you know, basically avoid this, you know, pull hair pulling scenario, which is, which is never fun. <laughs> um, so how do you go about doing it? Um, uh, you know, creating a lab notebook uh, that is version control is, uh, is in my opinion, the best way to go about it uh, because it makes us, as, as you know, you guys pointed out, uh, makes it easy to share and collaborate with, uh, you know, your fellow project mates, uh, be those lab mates or teammates in a corporate setting. Um, Specifically, I'd also like to talk about how uh, I go about doing it, which is investing everyday effort in it. Uh, so, you know, starting at the end, uh, start of, at the beginning of the day, reviewing what I had written, uh, closing uh, my previous day, uh, and and you know, using uh, small artifacts uh, and and small ideas that I you know sort of write down and moving from you know cursory uh, uh, you know documentation to more detailed ideas. Uh, as as I as I you know go through the day, uh, and also it helps me have a you know degree of closure towards the end of the day because I know uh, you know I've achieved a certain amount and I'm able to document and, and save that. Uh, another very important thing here is uh, to use a ledger approach, uh, as in like don't edit entries uh, but just add stuff because it helps to generate audit trails. It's the same idea from a physical lab load notebook where you don't want to tear out pages which might invalidate the integrity of the notebook and and you know make in, in that case, uh, patent filing uh, harder. Um, finally, uh, you know, when, when I'm talking about how to go about doing it, clarifying and rephrasing, uh, uh, you know, every day as, as you iterate on the ideas is, is a great way to uh, start small but keep building on it. It's like accumulating interest, right? Uh, you will see the results of it uh, at the end of the life cycle of the project. Um, another thing that I found to be useful is once I've you know, uh, figured out what works, generating a template and, and sharing that with the rest of my team. Uh, and, and finally also recording negative results and failures because it's a journey of arriving at the final result rather than just, uh, you know, a magical solution that shows up in Untitled Notebook number 23. So the maxim that I use is better to write it down and not need it than to not write it down and need it later on. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this tool that is up on your screen is one that I use. I'm happy to chat more about it in the Slack channel as well, because I'm conscious of time. I feel like I have overrun it a little bit. Um, I already touched on these AI ethics issues. Uh, so this is a great way of making that happen. Um, finally, just a little bit about the Montreal AI Ethics Institute. If you want to learn more, you can go uh, onto that link. Thank you. Perfect. You have about 30 seconds left. So perfect on the time. Um, I am wondering if I can ask you a really quick question, which yes. is if you could explain version control about a lab notebook in like 30 seconds for a researcher. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so the tool that I mentioned that was on the slides, uh, uh, version control for a lab notebook is just, so you, you set up a template, right? It, you can think of it as a markdown file or whatever formats you prefer. Um, setting that up and, and, and adding, you know, quote unquote pages to it. Uh, it's, it's version controlled in the sense as you would perhaps update a readme file on a, on a GitHub repo, uh, but doing that incrementally rather than making changes where you'd have to go and, um, and, and do git diffs to see where the differences are in terms of one page update to another. It's just adding on pages and, and, uh, and updating it as you go along.